Hello. Sometimes the night time, the evening, has a wonderful beauty all of its own. We see starlight. We hear nocturnal animals who we never see during the day. They scurry about. It's a gentle sound of the night breeze. And there's always a distinctive stillness. Lights can be seen far away. Noises come to us as if they're near. It has a special and often healing quality to it. So I may not be alone in finding some of the promises in Scripture, as they seem to be written, quite scary. That the city of God will always be in light. That the sun will never go down. We're surely to understand these promises figuratively, as meaning that we're never far from the presence or the eternal love of God. Because there was evening and there was morning in creation. It's part of the way God makes things. The poet R.S. Thomas lived in what would nowadays be called a dark sky environment, one where there were virtually no street lights, apart from lights in farms and cottages. You wouldn't see any light during the night except celestial light. In the poem we're here at the end, he meditates on the idea of an owl, a night bird, as being something to do with the presence of God in his life and God's action in his life. It's important to remember that although we think of owls as wise symbols of great wisdom, the people of Israel regarded them as unclean. When they're mentioned in the Bible, they're mentioned as a thing that inhabits desolate places. But not so with us. We think of them as something we might see at night, or hear calling at night, perhaps swooping in front of the car as we drive along. There's something about silence and beauty and the way God can sometimes be hidden from us but suddenly appear and make himself known to us. We can only see God in the start of this poem as a sound of beating wings, as a breath, as something passing by, fluttering, brushing a wing against us. And God may seem absent to us a lot of the time, but God can always see us and hold us, even when we can't see God. The poem is called Raptor, which has a rather fearsome image of the idea of an owl as what it is, a bird of prey, intent upon seizing and tearing with its talons. And the image comes to mind, doesn't it, of the owl striking. And it's an uncomfortable image for God. The poet Francis Thompson compared God to the hound of heaven. God's love as somehow being like a bloodhound, a hunting dog, that sought Francis Thompson through the years, through the months and days of his life, sought in love and power and in some strength, until Francis was caught in the love and the salvation of God. So the idea of God as chaser, as Raptor cuts two ways. God hunts for us because he wants our presence in love and awe and praise. Deuteronomy 32, 
extends the image and says this, Moses, these are the words of Moses, like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that flutters over its young, spreading out its wings, catching them, bearing them on its pinions. God as eagle. God is not tame. We cannot bend God to fit our desires. God is not safe. God is love and it is a dangerous and a wonderful and an awesome love. C.S. Lewis, of course, referred to Aslan as not a tame lion, not a safe lion. But in God's presence, we always have shelter. We use, aren't we, to the image of God as mother hen, sheltering chicks under her wings. Psalm 91. We hear this idea of God almost as raptor, the one who catches and holds. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. going to end with the poem and after that we'll see an image of God as eagle and holder and one who holds the world which we're probably all quite familiar with Raptor R.S. Thomas You have made God small setting him astride a pipette or a retort studying the bubbles absorbed in an experiment that will come to nothing. I think of him rather as an enormous owl, abroad in the shadows, brushing me sometimes with his wing, so the blood in my veins freezes, able to find his way from one soul to another, because he can see in the dark. I have heard him crooning to himself, so that almost I could believe in angels, those feathered overtones in love's rafters. I have heard him scream too, fastening his talons in the great adversary, or in some lesser denizen maybe, like you or me. <laughs>